Okay, but um, so hello everyone. So this is um, this first tutorial is going to be an introduction to causal inference and and causal inference tools, basically. So um, let me just share my screen. Okay. Um, right. Okay, so I suppose you can see my screen now. Um, okay. So yeah, um, as I said, like, so uh, we already had like uh, some, um, okay, so can you, like, we already had some in the introduction, there was a discussion, in the introduction to the challenge, there was a discussion about what causal inference is and what is the goal of using it in this, um, in this challenge. So can one of you define for me, from your understanding, what causal inference is? Like, um, what, what is your understanding? What is your understanding of what is causal inference and what is the goal of um, using it? Any, any volunteers? Anything? Yes. Um, hello. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, I think it's to like use it to measure like relationships between two different uh, events, kind of thing. Like, uh, will one thing influence another thing? Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's one kind of yes of uh, of um, what is causal inference is. Yeah. Okay. Anyone else want to share um, like their understanding and like especially when it comes to the application in this um, or this week. Okay, so um, okay, so there's no one who wants to let's um, let's move on. But basically, yes, what Henock said is just like uh, one kind. Let's say, um, well, it's not one kind, but just um, the basic of it. We want to learn causation, so and um, just starting by like what causation is. So there was this discussion earlier, and Yababa showed you these graphs that showed um, spurious uh, correlations. So these were like uh, variables that like, um, what is the relationship between these two? That they they were matching, they were like, there was a clear correlation between the two. But like, we know just uh, by our common sense, we know that these two uh, uh, variables are not causing each other, or there is no actual correlation between the two. So just uh, here, it's a, like, um, here is an emphasis on that, the difference between causality and correlation. So, you know, in correlation, this is like 
the actual correlation is a measure that you can compute the relationship between two variables. And um, yeah, so if you like in the normal, like uh, normalized way, you have like a correlation can be between minus one and one. So basically, if uh, two variables are uh, like highly correlated or the correlation is one, this is called like linear correlation. If their values increase together and decrease together, if it's like minus one, that means like one increases, that means that the other decreases. And if the correlation is zero, that means like, yeah, okay, there is no actual correspondence between the values of each one and the other. Okay, this is just like the correlation. Uh, causation is that the relationship that actually one variable causes the other. So it's like changing it. With, so for example, let's say we have two variables, X and Y, and if X causes Y, that means if we change X, Y will change. And this we know for sure. But a correlation between X and Y doesn't automatically means that changing X will change Y. Um, it's like, a, it's basically, you can say that a causation, uh, well, like if we, uh, like uh, if there is a causation between two variables, that means they are correlated, but the, the opposite is not true. It's not automatically true. Okay, this is just like um, an emphasis on the difference between the two. So it, it appears can appear from here uh, that uh, what is um, the difficulty on in like, you, you know, when you calculate the, co the correlation, if you know, like if you have the distribution of the two variables, you can just easily um, uh, calculate the correlation between the two. Um, but like uh, just knowing that, uh, um if you have data you can easily cal cal calculate the correlation but knowing the causation this is like a more tricky question um let's say um okay so let's say just like take an example simple example so uh say let me just say this and we want to see like if you want to say anything let's say like um we have an ice cream shop and um in the summer you notice two things like you are measuring to like you're measuring your sales you are like um, you're a diligent uh, shopkeeper you're keeping your sales every day and you also you're keeping like your expenses like electric bill and you notice in the summer that uh, both your electric bill expenses and the sales are increasing in tandem together so just looking at this, you can say that directly that the, uh, the electric bill um, uh, uh, expense and the sales are correlated, okay? But are they, one of them is causing the other? This is a question. And like, um, okay, what is your read on this? Like, what, uh, what do you think uh, we can, like, we can conclude from, from this? Can we conclude anything about the causation of the two, between the two or not? Okay, Sheila is saying we cannot conclude anything about, about the causation, right? We cannot, yes. So that's correct, we cannot conclude. But there is like um, maybe, and this was something we could, like we will we'll comment up, uh, on a little bit later, is that like maybe one of us can think like, um, um, like maybe one, there is a shared, variable that is affecting the two and that is the heat basically we can say like the heat makes pushes people to buy more ice cream and the heat also increases our like maybe expenses by like because we are using air conditioner for example in the summer so both the weather is a confounding a confounder variable that is changing the two so um and this is like the definition of a, confo a, confo a confounder. Confounder variable is uh, is um, like is a variable that you are not considering that is causing the change in the two uh, two, two variables you are looking at. So, um, but of course, like how did we know this? Like how did we know the causation in this case? 
how do we know that the heat is causing this? This because we have a prior knowledge. This is like it's common sense, of course. This is a simple case, but it's a knowledge. It's what we will call later and a domain knowledge because we have this knowledge that heat pushes people to buy more ice cream. This is knowledge. And we also know that heat like is causing us to use more, more air conditioning. This is another knowledge, this causation between the heat and sale, increasing in sales and increasing in expense in electric bills. These are uh, causation relations that we learned from our prior knowledge. We didn't get from the data. Okay, so just like uh, this is, um, I'm mentioning that term terminologies that are like um, terms. Uh, yeah, I will find them in the slide a little bit uh, in a bit, but uh, okay, I'm just mentioning them beforehand. So how we do, how we learn about causality. So here we can use solid prior causal knowledge. Like if we have domain knowledge, we know that there are things that like one thing causes the other. We already know this. We can implement that already. Of course, once we know like one thing causes the other, we can still measure like the effect, how much it causes it, like how much it affects it, to what degree. Um, so there is like there is this measure of the effect, how much the quantity, how the quantitative effect, how much is it. But also, if we collect the, this, this is like um, another way to, to learn causality is collect data in a carefully uh, designed experiment. And like, um, if you know what ran randomized control trials are. Um, so, or like uh, one example of this is like the drug uh, experiments are usually randomly, random, randomized control trials. And also, you know, AB testing also is another kind of randomized control trial. Basically, what you do there is that you design, you, uh, you want to see what is the effect of one thing on the another. So for like, for, for a drug experiment, you are, you are trying to measure the effect of a drug on the health of one particular health outcome. So these are two variables you want. The drug is X and Y, is, so, so X is the use of drug and why is like the health outcome one particular health outcome let's say uh, blood pressure for example and then what you do so because like because you know there are co there are possible co confounder uh, variables to account for those you go you're going to do what you're going to like pick like from a representative um, sample you're going to pick randomly assign randomly which patient is going to take the drug or not and um, then to to measure the effect of the drug to measure the effect the causal effect what you're going to do is going to measure like the average between the between the treated group and the, and the control group or untreated group so what is what you're doing here the randomization is getting rid of the or accounting for the effect of any other hidden variable so if there is any effect from any other variable you don't know about, but you, you account for it by just collecting a big sample that is representative and you assign people randomly to it. That's what you do. And um, in, the, in that case, you can, you can measure the actual causal effect between like the, the drug and um, health outcome. Um, with big data, you can do this without like, Another way, like, um, how to say, it. so these are like, this is a controlled experiment. You go out and you actually, um, like, um, uh, do some intervention. Basically, you are giving part of their group uh, a drug. And then, so you're changing, basically, you, you are like, uh, your variable, you're going out there and changing its value so that, like, and measuring if it has effect or not in a way that, you get rid of any confounding, uh, confounding uh, variables. But if you are using big data, you can hope that because you have a, a very, very huge amount of data that there are like uh, the possibility that the, all the unmeasured confounders can be mitigated just by the fact that you have a lot of, um, a lot of number, like a big data and also like a, num a big number of features. So, not just like uh, not just the number of records. You also want to the number of uh, columns, the number of uh, features. So that's what we're, like um, 
yeah, we were talking about in the morning about enriching your data. You want to add as many features as possible so that like if any one of them like is a confound a confounding variable, you include it so that like when it comes to the variables you really want to look at, you can basically when you include it, you are like accounting for its effect and like um, and and um, not getting any bias because of it. Okay, I'm just like um. I hope that's what I'm saying is clear. Um, if not, you can stop me at any moment, at any point. You, you don't need to really understand everything, like all this terminology. I'm just like have to have a good like um, basic understanding of of like the, the like this is just about why this is difficult, why this is a challenge, and how it like um, basically how it's going to be solved uh, in our like case. Okay, so this is more about. Um, so we're, we're saying causal inference, causal inference, but like um, basically when we're learning causality, uh, there are two things we want to learn. We want to know if there is like looking at two variables, we want to know if there is a causal relationship between the two or not. Um, so this is like, a, could be if they are called sometimes causal discovery or like learning causal relations, it's clear. Um, another one, another thing is that we want to measure how much changing a specific variable is going to change um, um, like like a, like a, if there is a target variable or we call it the outcome we want to see how much it will change if we change a variable that we call the treatment so say we change x and measure the effect that happens in y and uh, we want to learn what is the causal effect so the, not just the effect that happens in y the, y the effect that happens in y as a result of changing x so this is like uh, the definition of the what is the treatment what is the outcome so these are the terms uh, sometimes the treatment is like uh, okay the change in the treatment is called the intervention um so this also like mentioned before maybe you can like when you found this kind of like um terminology it's just knows it's basically just not to get uh, confused Again, this is a definition of a confounder. The variable that causal influence is both treatment at outcome. Um, and so you, you need to account for it. If you want to like measure the relationship between these two, you have to account for any other confounder. It, it can be a confounder, it can be a variable that you know, but it can be hidden variables because you didn't measure it or you, you have no way of measuring it actually. Okay. So this is like the example of the, the ice cream before we talked about. So, um, okay. So another thing that we want to define is a causal graph. So um, you already like know what is uh, a dog is, right? You know this uh, directed acyclical graph. Uh, the co the thing is that um, so it's a, it's a graph that has like nodes and edges and doesn't have any cycles within it. Um, but in the case of causal graph, what is the meaning that the nodes are the variables and the edges um, basically um, uh, represent the relationship between, um, so the it's directed, so the arrow between y and x means that y is causing x and y is causing z in this case, so in this case of this graph. So this is just the definition of a causal graph. The value of having a causal graph is that, of course, it's a visual represent, representation. And basically, when you are looking, and within this is what you are, when you are trying to learn the causal relationship between all your variables, what you're going to be doing is that you're going to be um, basically looking for all possible graphs, and then, uh, the computation is going to be like because you have data you're going to look at like what is the probability that is i'm just saying like hand waving me that what i'm saying is describing this because this is not the right terminology it's not the probability exactly you are looking at the maximum likelihood expect um or like uh, another kind of, of measure you are basically looking for the graph you're going to be looking at the graph that uh, is more likely to represent your data okay so uh, that is the value of having a graph or a causal graph 
Uh, so yeah, so there's another thing. So this is like maybe a scary kind of uh, math, but um, what is here that there is not only that there is some kind of uh, another thing. There is another assumption or another requirement for a causal graph. It's not only that the variables like y is called in x. The um, the graph is also um, basically can be represent um, a probability distribution. You know for your random variables and uh, it's such that um, basically um, the whole distribution is that just like, in few words I can say that um, uh, the probability of X just depends on Y it doesn't depend on any in anything so depend on Y or like uh, anything that comes before it um, and doesn't depend on any other part that is not uh, like directly connected to it so basically yeah so this is just like this like uh this is the exact maths about uh, of this how to write the, um, the probability distribution and uh, the the condition that there is like um independence between um between like uh the variable w and any distribution for for any variable that except its parent so it's just like that so i don't know if this is confusing it doesn't matter really so much but it's just um uh part of the definition um okay so if you really want to understand like uh, it, it's not super complicated if you like know statistics it's not super complicated to go through this there is this references in the talent document if you really want to go deeper in this, into this um uh, yeah, so just to like understand how things work. But yeah, I'm not going to go into this even though I put the equations, I'm going to go through that. Um, so another like, uh, so I already touched on this a little bit. So what what you want to build, like once you have, um, you have a set of variables, you have data and you have a set of variables and you want to learn what is the causal relationships and what is the causal effect between these variables what you want to construct is a causal model so it's just like um, you're quantitatively describing the causal relationship between your variables you are as you are supposed to select a model basically to describe them so yeah so what you start with is that like any assumptions or any prior knowledge you have to have to implement it within your model so if you have like a set of variables and you already know that one variable is causing the other already you have to implement that uh, you define that relationship already and then what is the missing is you have to learn from your data so you're going to like uh, using of course there are traditional ways to do to do this but we are of course uh, focusing on the machine learning part so you're using like uh, machine learning to learn um basically the causal model that represents your data uh okay so it, like also you can come across this uh, terminology um the kinds of uh, of causal models that you can use uh are there are structural causal models and potential outcome frameworks so we're not going to touch on these the structural causal models these are the ones that use use causal graphs actually uh, the other one, the potential outcome framework, this um, focuses more on like um, a couple of variables, not a, the a whole set, and um, and doesn't consider like the full graph. Basically, considers only a part of it. So um, this is just like the general definition. But okay, so again, I'm going to define the structure of causal causal models. As I said, they are they have two components. They have the causal graph that we already defined, and we have the structural equations. So um, which are basically specify the causal effects uh, defined by the by the by the graph. Okay. This that's that's the thing that we want to want to like the thing we want to learn is part of these equations, basically. And um, now let me see the time uh, so that we go through that example or not. 
Maybe it's not necessary. Just um, this is um, like um, a causal graph. Like here, this is an example of like we want to learn if there is a relationship between the Yelp ratings of a restaurant and the number of customers in the restaurant. Let's say um, the Yelp review is um, is T, so it's not defined. So this is the treatment, and the number of customers is output um, is the outcome, which is Y. But like uh, you can see that I have a compounder variable here X that, that is affecting the both of the two, the two my treatment and my outcome, and this is like uh, the type of that of the let's say it's the type of the, of the type of the restaurant, for example. So just like this is just an example, and um, I, I wanted to like show you the kind of equations that you can define, or this is structural equations. And it's basically what is what is saying here is nothing complicated. So we have X, the type of uh, of, of of restaurant. T is an uh, the Yelp review, and Y is uh, like the number of customers. And what we are saying here is that we are defining the um, this is the probability distribution function and we define it as depending on some noise some hidden variables something that we don't know about so this is epsilon epsilon x because here we said um basically x is causing t that means the the probability distribution function for t is going to depend on x in addition to some hidden variables something that we don't know about which is called epsilon t while y, uh, looking back at the graph, y is caused both by x and by t. So its equation, it will have x and t and, and, and extra variables. Of course, what we because we don't know epsilon, this is not something that we, we what we can we compute has to be independent of this. And that's what we do, actually. So um, in the end, but like, okay. It, so these are the basic the structural equations and, um, the basic structural equations and this is like uh, so these are the basic two basic components um so uh, do calculus what was it proposed by judia pearl um this is uh, like define it's, it was proposed to define the intervention so if we want to measure let's say Suppose we know that this is uh, our, like we already know the causal relationship between our three variables. And, um, okay, so what we care about is we want to say, to see if how, if we change T to some value T, like T, like T dash, uh, or uh, T prime, what will happen to Y, which is like, um, in one example, this was the Yelp review, and this was like the number of customers. And to and to calculate that, what we calculate is this uh, do of t of t prime. I don't actually have. I didn't include the, the equation here, but it's basically um, um, it will be calculated from um, from from your data. It's like expectation values of like uh, what happens to to y once you change um, t to t prime um okay so you can say like uh there is this um the difficulty of like you have already your data already collected you're not going to go out and actually do any changing to your data so, so that like uh, you can measure here, so what what we are what we are doing here is an actual just calculation is not an actual measurement. So this is a difference between this and what we talked about in the beginning about randomized um, control experiments. Um, okay. Anyway, so the next uh, okay. So any questions so far? Because the next part is going to be about the the tools. Any questions? Is this clear? Does this like explain? Everything's fine. Great. So, um, for the next part,
Okay, so I guess I'll just because I have it here, it looks. Um, So there are these um, tools. So uh, yeah, so we talked about all of this. Um, I mean, I talked about the basic. I really didn't go into the details of how this works, how the like um, the machine learning um, implementations of all of these um, kind of modeling works. So there are like different um, supervised, semi-supervised, and um, machine learning uh, approaches to this. Of course, there are also like non-machine learning uh, algorithms. The thing is that the, the main difficulty is coming from, as I said, maybe I said before, that you want to learn the causal relations from your data. You want to construct all possible um, causal graphs and then see, compute through your data, which one is the most likely. Okay, basically, this is just in basic terms. It's not precise, so, um, but like, this is a basic idea. The, the, pro the point is that how, like, uh, just constructing the possible graphs is computationally expensive like just how many there are going to be a huge number of like just consider how many variables you can have like, and how many graphs you can have basically based on like a number of variables starting from one two three and then once you increase the number the number of graphs is going to increase um very quickly and and then doing the computation you you discover that actually what the number the amount of data you actually need to get a good uh, let's say um confidence in in on your in your result is going to be huge so yeah so this is a been the main difficulty that's why like with traditional uh, algorithms this was not an easy task uh, to do okay so just to because we are going to practically for this challenge what you're going to do is going to be using one of this um one of these tools so this this switch i should share my screen actually so let me just bring this one here um, all right so uh i'm referencing this but probably there are more uh, there is causal inference there is do i causal impact and causal mix these are all like um tools that are available that you can basically using your like um starting with your data and uh, like you can build basic start building a model and learn from your data which one is um um like basically to get the final result is that the actual like a uh, causal graph that describes the causal relations between your your data so this is causal links causal next sorry okay and this is i'm just going through uh, i didn't like have it in uh, this is the documentation itself so you can go through it yourself and understand like uh, step by step and they also have like uh, some explanations of the basics so you don't really um need to go so deep into like the statistical understanding of things just like you can um go through how this works and this is the same works for the other uh tools um so and i think these are all uh, python tools so okay uh basically yes so this is what it's okay i'm sharing my screen right okay um all right, so let's just go through it. Um, so this is a basically the structural learning. What you want to, to learn is uh, um, um, basically, so by the network is basically the causal, the causal graph itself. And as we said, learning the relations, learning the relations between your variables means that you want to learn what is your, uh, your causal graph. Um, 
the one that is actually represent your data, supported by your data. Um, so first of all, there is a basis. The one thing you start with first is that you like, okay, you start by like uh, of course downloading the the like call the call the next first, and then um, here you are importing it. Um, defining the structure model and what you do is that if you know if you have any domain knowledge already if you know one variable is already related causes the other you can add you can add the edge so for example here what they are going through is um, so uh, this is like uh, they want to estimate whether a student will pass or fail an exam looking at various influences like uh, so this is a variable that they have in the data they have school support relationship between family members and other variables uh, so um let's see this like you can see actually the data here if we can see okay you can see the features here Describe so there are like 33 features and um, you can look at like uh, each one of them and the definition so okay so what they do here is like after defining um starting the model what they already okay they assume that expert tell us that the following causal relationship apply so that like um the health affect the absences which like it makes common sense right and uh, health also affects the grade okay this is like this is an so this one sounds like a, like a common sense but this one is like they are telling you it's an assumption so you include that already because you anything you know you have to include first because it's going to make your learning easier and better basically you don't want to like if you already know it you don't want your model to figure it out for you um okay and then uh basically yeah so this is like um, that's what you have so far in this in this uh in the in the graph okay yeah and you can like you can see like what kind of uh, plotting you can use for this and then uh you want to learn the structure so you want to actually do the learning of this is like uh, the next step uh, or like uh, the crucial step that you want to learn the causal graph. But before you do that, you have to prepare your data for learning. And this is going to be similar to like what you do for machine learning. Generally, um, you want to get rid of uh, any like um, non-numeric data, you have to change it. Um, so, and okay, for if you want to get rid of any kind of feature you don't want to include, you can drop that um, if you don't want to keep. So you just keep, you want to keep, okay. So you have to have, you want to have as many relevant features, not only the ones that you know is relevant, of course, there are features you want to keep just because you know, maybe they are conf confounded variables, but anything you don't want to include, you can remove. Um, like you do also all the ADA things that if you are missing data, all of that you have to do before. Um, Okay, so um, yeah, so there is like, we have, this is a step of making everything numeric. So like, if you have any non-numeric variables, you can, you want to like um, encode, because it's like label encode them into numerical variables. So this is cat changing categorical to, uh, to labels. And then, um, uh, okay, so, this um this is a step of like it can prepare everything and this here is a step of like um uh learning the structure basically okay so you can see here like you have this oh, God. <sighs> But here, what they are showing here is just like fully connected. I don't know what I'm doing here. Let's stop. I want to stop like uh, zooming in and out. This. Sorry. 
Yeah, so, sorry, uh, okay, cannot stop for, like, uh, should, like, choose, it's my mistake, um, it doesn't matter, I don't need to look at this so much, but this is just fully connected, what they do is that they connected everything to everything in all directions, okay, um, um, the thing is that here, like, uh, why is it, this is terrible learning, what happened? Like, nothing is like, uh, this is awful, like, what we, do, what we did, like, I can't, like, it's telling me that I, I, could, I could do this myself, like, I just say everything is connected to everything, and this is my answer. But the thing is here, this is not all the information that is included in this graph, it's not, just uh, that everything is connected there is like some measure of how strong is the relationship between each so the model is what is learning is learning that basically it's kind of learning like what is um um what is it's not a probability is that is one variable is calling the other and the opposite is also like there is like a small one is going to be a small probability the other are going to be bigger and bigger so what you do to get an actually meaningful graph from this is you have to set a threshold for like uh, what kind of um, what kind of relationship you want to include like have to be at some point and what they do so they here they remove any any edge below a threshold of like 0.08 and then they get this graph instead so so it was all connected before just because like they were including any kind of weak and the the, the strengths of the relationship is something that they learned from the data the model learned from the data so everything i was talking about was already basically computed and this is what you end up with as as your graph okay i'm doing the same um Okay, cannot stop other. Okay, sorry. Um. Okay, so. Uh, of course, like you can um things you can choose to like uh, tell the model to not include some particular uh, uh, relationships if you think like some relationships are wrong. You can remove them and you can tell the model to to basically um uh, remove like for example this is um, edges that you want not to be connected uh, okay so uh, if it's like the, the relationship doesn't make sense uh, causally you like um you could have included it from the like okay so in the beginning you included any kind of relationship you want you think is there but you can also remove any relationship that you think is not there so if things that like um for example here is example here are giving that um there is a relationship between uh, a student wanting to like uh, pursue higher education and their mother education so the relationship is like causally doesn't make any sense right because like what the student wants now doesn't affect what his mother already has right uh so you can remove that from your graph so it's, it's supposed to be here let's see this this two this relationship going from higher to mother education basically this was the one okay i'm sorry okay and um so they removed it using this um yeah so this is just Sorry, it's this my own. Um, okay, so just to um, so yeah, okay. So these are so this is like a, here this part about independent structure of anything that you can add or remove edges from your graph. Uh, be based on your domain knowledge or common sense, let's say. Um, this here, you can explore the structure, of course. Um, okay. Um, 
So, so what? Okay. So what we learned for so far is that like uh, what we has done in the previous uh, like. Um, all the previous part is that we took all our data, we use our domain knowledge, and we made as a, like the um, Cosenex basically learned from the data what is the, like the most probable causal graph. Um, yeah, so uh, this is not okay. This is something you can do, but it's not. It's not. Um, it's not enough. Let's say. Um, okay, but this is not defined here actually. So, uh, um, okay. All right. So, um, let's we'll go through it. Uh, okay. So just yes, before we go through this, um, any questions so far? I suppose that this was clear enough. Nothing complicated. So you get what is the point of all, like what we're doing right now. And um, um, of course, like this is one tool, but uh, I want to say it's going to be basically the same. But I honestly haven't like tried all the other tools, so I, I I'm expecting that it's going to be similar, more or less. Um, Okay, so um, what we want to do is we said before is that is a, learning the causal relations is not that's not uh, not everything. Um, we also want to learn the effects, right? Um, uh, how the the how to say how much is like, if we know that one variable affects the other, we want to know how much it affects it, okay? Um, so here, all right, so uh, basically, uh, okay, so this, this point is about like, um, actually it's about um, how to deal with uh, continuous features, so as the thing is here about cause and next only support discrete distributions and so when you deal with con continuous features you have to um discretize um discretize the discretize the data basically and um so for example yeah so like uh, to do this you want to use um Okay. Um, okay. There are helper methods for 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 doing that. Um, okay. So so this is what it is it was talking here about uh, the cardinality of like the categorical features. The thing is that once you um, When you change a categorical data into numerical data, uh, um, basically, uh, sorry, I don't want to say this. Um, okay. And all should. <laughs> thing is okay so uh okay so you know when when you change uh, categorical data into numerical data you can use like um um let's say you have a categorical variable that has like three categories 
Okay, so instead of six categories as, as categorical, we can change it to numerical uh, zero one value, Ma mainly so it's like a hot one encoding, right? Um, and then it's going to change the categorical variable into three, um, like each one representing one of the categories and like the value is going to be zero or one for these variables. And um, so this means that if you have like, a, for example, a variable that has so many categories, let's say 10 is going to change from one categorical variable to 10. And this is going to be just like a huge uh, number of variables. Uh, so there's possibility that you can reduce the cardinality of your, of your variables, meaning by instead of using the full categories, you can choose like um, maybe group some categories together um, and the example that they're giving here is that, um, uh, like, say, study time that is um, instead of using like uh, in number of hours, it can be uh, like uh, below below five or below two and more than two, something like that. So less categories to just reduce the number of features. Um, so this is something like you can do. Uh, you can try to do after like the first trial if you don't uh, think um, didn't work uh, didn't work as well. Uh, so this is uh, discretizing that we talked about before. Uh, just like um, but yeah, so it's, it's simple. Just like if you have a continuous variable, you just want to change it into like um, discrete variables if values. That means that you're going to be putting things into bins. Uh, so like the value between zero like you have a variable that is between zero and hundred uh, you can say like i would make it into 10 bins and it's going to be like uh between zero and one and zero and ten and ten and twenty something like that so basically yeah so this is what like uh, you have to do so this is causal causal nix is it's a limitation for causal nix that it can only de handle uh, discrete values, variables, not not continuous. Um, so yeah, so this is like how to like split your data between train and train and test. Um, and finally, once you have learned the model, uh, you can you can learn basically like um, the probability distribution the probability distribution um, from from uh, uh, okay from from your data. Um, so what, what I wanted to say is not actually here, but, um, okay, so this is like, uh, uh, okay. So what we talked about before in the slides, do calculus, uh, this is like the one that, you know, if you remember, this is like when you want to measure the like the effect of a particular intervention so um so this is like when like a to when you know a variable is causing the other you can see like if changing the value of the of the cause how much it's the effect of the outcome is going to change and uh, basically you you use um uh like there is a functionality basically here in Cosonix that can you can easily do this and um so and you can see like uh basically distribution before and after you do your intervention um so let's say this is um the basics of of this so this is also not everything but okay we are over time and we will have a tutorial tomorrow so we will continue this tomorrow, basically. Um, so any questions? I don't know, this was 
Okay, Hillary. <coughs> so my question is, the I saw that the graphs started like fully connected, and then they reduced it to 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 like few connections. So mm -hmm. how do how do they figure out the strength of the connections so that when they say uh, remove edges below the ratio of 0 0.8 so how will the like strengths figure out in the first place this is from the data so this is a comp computation from the data the data was so you provide the data uh, set, sorry you provide a day um you provide data so this is like training data and from the data because the data has like uh, there is particular you think about it you have particular kind of um um uh, probability distribution for like so you, basically you can learn um i cannot show you exactly i do not have like i can show you like the kind of computation that is happening um so uh but basically what is happening is that like the the model is looking for um like like looking at all of the graph like fully connected is basically is going to be like every possible graph is part of it and it's going to be computing like the probability that this graph actually the probability that your data is coming from the graph so um so like uh, you have the like um you know when in when you do i want to just use something that is simpler not to actually um or maybe we can look at an actual um let's do this but this is just basically general idea but is in 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 statistical inference usually uh you have a you have data and you assume, or like um, you, say, you say, like I want to see how, like, um, like just for example, if you want to see, like, uh, um, you have uh, just one variable, let's say, and you have like multiple um, or many um, uh, value, like experiments, like you measure this variable. And then you want to see like uh, what is the probability distribution that is actually um, producing this data. And what you do is basically you calculate estimation estimators uh, from your data and cal calculate like um, uh, confidence interval from like you you calculate. Uh, um let's say just i'm going to use something simple let's say uh, you want to um you're assuming your data is coming from like a normal distribution just because like you looked at the at your data and it looked like it's a normal distribution then you say like okay, okay. so coming from a normal distribution with some kind of mean and some kind of uh, standard deviation and uh, what you measure is you measure like um, you calculate the average from your data but this is not exactly your mean, you, of course, you don't know. So you calculate um, a confidence interval for um, for uh, for your for the value, and you basically the the result of it is that um, you say like it's like a ninety five uh, ninety five percent interval. That means like the value is going to be uh, your mean plus or minus uh, some value depending on the standard deviation and the number of uh, of um, data points uh, uh, and basically the 95 percent uh, confidence intervals telling you that like um, if you do this trial like uh, 95 100 times your mean is going to fall Bit, between these two variables to two to two, two limits 95 percent of the time so this uh, i'm just giving you a simple example i don't know if you have like we have like a, a background if in the statistics you know about this confidence intervals and stuff calculating like the maximum likelihood uh, estimation yeah yeah uh yeah i'm familiar with that okay and, uh, yeah I've, I've noted that there's something that uh they're calling uh not yes not yes algorithm uh, they yes. say that 
that one is learning it. So I, I think it's applying the, those statistics. Yeah, so let's say like, so actually look at the, the actual, um, so what I, I gave is a really simple example of like, uh, of statistical inference, just not, not the causal inference, not what is happening right here. But just the idea of that when you start like the statistical uh, computation of you start with data and you try to estimate the like a parameter of your model, that is what happening. But like, okay, so what is the math behind this in particular case, in this particular case? Um, so instead of going to like uh so yeah i i maybe i showed you earlier that uh okay so i'm not sharing my full screen and not sorry um my screen um So uh, let me go to this. And okay, so when I showed you earlier, was that okay? That like the graph is okay equipped by these uh, probability distributions, and this is basically um, like uh, if you have all the nodes, V is uh, like all the nodes, all the like um, uh, the all the vertices in your in your graph. And you calculate the probability distribution function is uh, like uh, the joint um, probability distribution function is the uh, the, multi uh, the multiplication of um, each variable, and then like uh, again because of this like micro of, uh, requirement, it has to be like independent of anything that is not its parent. So this is the model. This is the value of the model. This is like sorry. This is a probability distribution that is described by the model and what you do is you're going to estimate based on your data you're going to estimate these variables basically you're going to calculate like a likelihood function um and uh based on like um particular so this is a for a particular graph and um so uh these are like you calculate these parameters and um, and basically you will have some likelihood and then like the the maximize it and get like um sorry you calculate the parameters that maximize this likelihood sorry so um and then basically you will end up with a particular graph with sorry with a particular like um uh dependencies between 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 nodes so it's still this is not exactly what they do so because this is a particular algorithm and um, they follow and actually i don't know the details in this particular case i'm just giving you like the how generally it works um so does this like answer the question or do you need something more detailed okay okay thank you all right um sorry if it's not precise um any other questions? Oh. Um, okay, so if there are no more questions, um, let's end up this session here and um, and we'll have, um, of course, um, we have Slack, but also we have a session tomorrow. So hopefully we're going to continue this discussion tomorrow. She won't start the discussion so far. So yeah. Um,